Hey everyone, today I want to provide you with an Adele training guide for level 1 to 275 plus. And this will mostly just cover maps and the most useful skills that you want to max in first in each of the jobs. Now of course doing daily quests like in the Arcane River and Monster Park and stuff is great additional EXP, but we'll mostly just be covering, covering like grinding maps here. Now. Level 1 through 30, I'm pretty sure you're stuck in the Adele storyline, or even maybe a little bit beyond that. I forget if it goes a little bit extra, it's been a while. And I was trying to transfer a Hyper Rock to my, like, a, a, a new Adele character to see if you can Hyper Rock out of here. Um, but I kept crashing, so I wanted to start this video because I was under a little bit of a time crunch. So, pretty sure you need to do the Adele storyline. Um, and then once you're level 30, or if you're able to cheese it and get out, I would just train in Gold Beach until you're level 30, or at level 30, do the Gold Beach storyline. You will get to level 40 off of this, and then you'll want to go to Rihanna Strait, which you can get to from also the light bulb on the left that you'll get at level 30, or you can get there from Lith Harbor, there's a penguin over on the right hand side of the map to go to Rien, and then if you keep going to the right, you'll get to Rihanna Strait. Uh, it takes a minute on this boat, or you can log off and log back in on your character, and you should already be at the port that you need to be at. Just to showcase that here. So you don't have to wait the whole minute. Yep, so we're here. And then you can talk to Puro, and you go to Theme Dungeon, Rihanna Strait, if you didn't just use the light bulb to go there immediately. And then you'll get to level 50. And you'll get some items from the Rihanna Dungeon and the Gold Beach Dungeon that you can Star Force up to level 5, which will help with future maps if you're not picking up any gear, which you should pick up some gear on your way. Now at level 50, this is the Six Path Crossway again. You can just go here whenever you want through the Maple Guide. And I really like Silent Swamp. Silent Swamp is nice. I haven't been going over the skills that you need to be pushing. Uh, so I'll do that now. Uh, one point in Blade of Will, max out Jaunt and Martial Discipline. Magic Dispatch you can kind of skip early on. High Rise is more useful for bossing, it lets you hover. Uh, I always like to max out the movement abilities on classes first, which are Jaunt and Martial Discipline, because it gives you more speed and jump here. And Blade of Will is just your main mobbing move. It doesn't really have too great of a range, but you'll mostly be story locked with it anyway, so that's just kind of something that you'll have to deal with for a while. Job 2, since you'll have that for those theme dungeons and uh, Silent Swamp and Beyond here, Skewering is your main mob skill. It's pretty good. has some verticality to it. Uh, and you'll want uh, at least a point in that, and then honestly, Blade Caster Control, Will to Live are both very good. Will to Live lets you recover a ton of HP and MP, like to the point where you may not even really need to use HP or MP potions at this point. Uh, Blade Caster Control is your mastery skill, always very good to up the minimum damage that you do. Uh, weave and Fusion, you want at least a point in, maybe a couple points in. It's your attack booster. Unfortunately, Adele does have an active attack booster. You do have to cast your attack speed boost. Um, uh, so once you get Blademaster Control to 5, get some Weave and Fusion, get your will to live up a bit, and you can start maxing out Skewering probably at that point. Uh, Resonance Rush and Impale, I mostly use as movement abilities to get around boss rooms as opposed to normal maps for the most part. Um, you do get a damage buff for consuming the crystal that's generated from Impale, like this guy right here. Um, if you hit something with it anyway, if you don't hit something you don't get the damage boost. So, And Impale also has a cooldown, so honestly I would just stick to using Skewering for your attacking skill here and just keep jumping down and jumping down and attacking in Silent Swamp up until you are level 69 nice. Um, the reason for 69 is because that lets you go to the Nihal Desert. The Sunset Road Desert of Serenity map has a mob on it that's level 89 and if you're within 20 levels of a map you can get runes and combo orb EXP from that map. So 
By now you'll be third job because that's at level 60, so level 69. And eviscerates your main mobbing skill here. You will also get Reign of Destruction, which is like an area of effect skill that lasts for like 20% of the cooldown or something like that. Uh, Trune Ability is just a shield, you don't really need that for training. Feather Foot you don't really need for training. Noble Summons is great, Hunting Decree is great. Uh, what you'll mostly want here is once you get your point in Eviscerate, you probably want to get Ascent, at least like one point in Ascent, because it'll just boost a ton of skill damage just immediately on a whole bunch of skills here. Gives you final damage percent and critical rate, so honestly maxing Ascent is very, very good. Uh, maxing out then Eviscerate Hunting Decree is very good. It's the skill that lets your swords fly around, and these swords are OP. You get four swords at uh, third job that can fly around, and you have to kind of be actively attacking stuff for them to be attacking, otherwise they'll just pause like that and they won't just hit stuff, so you can't just idle and farm with them, but they'll automatically go after stuff. And how I keep these swords up, uh, honestly, uh, obviously you get uh, ether weaving meter, gauge meter, just from idling a bit, it just went up right there you saw, but you also get meter for killing stuff. So it went up there again, went up there again, uh, and uh, I have my main attack skill like right next to Hunting Decree, and honestly I just push them both at the same time while I'm training. So control and shift for me, that's just comfortable, you know, whatever works for you. You can also micromanage the sword energy better than me, but it won't be necessary for training per se. Now you want to be here until about level 90, in which case, if this video is being watched before they changed Zakum's arms to not give as much EXP, then you'll want to grab a rune, you'll want to grab a legion, double EXP buff, if someone's casting an MVP EXP buff, just get any EXP buff you can, and go do Zakum's arms, because you'll get so many levels from that. Uh, if not, you can stay here until level 93. The reason for that, again, is very similar to why we came here at 69. Can you go to Ludibrium through here? No, you cannot. Okay, I did not do the Ludibrium quest. But I really like this map. It usually has really high burn because no one goes to it. And by this point, you'll be third slash fourth job, so you can either eviscerate to kill everything, it's pretty good EXP, and have your hunting decrees flying around. Or if you got 100 off of Zakum, you can start using Cleave. Cleave will be your main mobbing skill for the rest of your life. It's very, very good. Uh, Noble Summons is also a very good just, I need some AoE to hit the map skill, like if you're on a frenzy buff. Uh, but for the most part, until you're getting later on, in the maps, you don't necessarily have to push Noble Summons. I bring up Noble Summons because then you get Aether Bloom, which is a good combo ability, at least in bosses, for sure. Uh, also for killing elites. So Noble Summons brings all your swords to you, Aether Bloom makes them all spin in the same spot. Or you can just use Aether Bloom separate, and all of the swords will just twirl wherever they are on the map if it comes off cooldown here. So, again, I use it more often in bosses, but I'll use it in training in later maps, like in Grandis or whatever. Or even, uh, we might get there earlier because some of the maps have changed, but uh, get a point in Cleave, TLDR, get a point in Cleave, and then you'll want Ruination, you'll want Perfection, at least get a point in Perfection because it's one of those skills, again, that just increases all of the damage of all your skills, like a one point wonder. And Strive is great, gives you even more critical rate and attack power. Blade Caster Expert, again, more attack power, more mastery to increase your uh, lowest point of damage that you're doing. All four of these bottom skills here are just awesome, in addition to just maxing out Cleave. Uh, Plummet is mostly used in bosses like Viho or other bosses where you just want to stop your horizontal momentum midair. Uh, you don't necessarily need it for training. Uh, Aether Guard is something that can reduce damage, which is mostly for bossing. Grave Proclamation is mostly for bossing. 
Uh, so really just cleave in these four skills and then get Aether Bloom after you've maxed out cleave because it's it's more AoE, you know, it's more buttons to push if you want to get there. Uh, but yeah, you'll want to be at this, this Robo's map or the one to the right, which you will be within 20 levels of. Someone is here even. I won't scare him away too much. Uh, but you can also train here uh, until you're like level 105 to get some skill points going on, maybe even 110. And yep, he's defending his map, so let's get out of here. Uh, and then I know a lot of people like gatekeepers and stuff. Uh, this is where you'll need a little bit of Star Force, which those Steam Dungeon items will help you out with. You can Star Force your weapon a little bit. Hopefully you have some clothes you can just throw some junk Star Force onto if you didn't prep your character at all. And I really like this Twisted Time Giant Vikings map, which is just the top left portal of the regular Vikings map. And you just jump down, you just jump down, and jump down, and cleave. Jump down and, cleave. and usually it's 100% burn. No one really comes here, at least as of making this video. No one really uses this map, to my knowledge, other than maybe a select few amount of people. Uh, and it's just awesome. It's so much EXP. You'll level up to 120 really fast here. I honestly stay here until uh, stayed here until like 145. I switched it up to Thanatos just because I was getting a little bit bored of it. You can do Thanatos as well. Same idea. You just go across the whole map and cleave it as you would use your AOE skill on whatever other class. Use Portal up. You just go around in a circle. Make sure you have your Noble Summons out, which is your swords that fly around. And now, here's where I would say if you have reward points, or you have a Hyper Teleport Rock coupon for even just a day on, on your character here, I would circumvent Gigantic Spirit Vikings, and I would circumvent Thanatos for Kerning Tower. I can get over to Kerning Tower here. So Victoria Island, Kerning Tower. You have to get to 145 to get the quest to enter here, but you can circumvent that and use a Hyper Rock to get in here early. You can kind of cheat a little bit. So even at like level 130, honestly, this would be pretty good. Um, if you've got 80 plus Star Force or just a lot of power in general, not necessarily 80 Star Force, these Star Force maps all the way up are really good. I like the Espresso Machines or the Grape Jelly Juice because on both of those maps, Adele's Cleave can just hit both of the platforms, the one you're on and the one underneath, and then you can just jump a little bit or leave the top platform to your swords that are flying around. Uh, really lazy training, really efficient. can do the same thing at Grape Jelly Juice, the one right over there since they added that map. Uh, and then at a certain point, uh, once you're getting out of the range of the level of this map, which is 155, if you wanted to, you can go to the Deadly Dressing Tables. And I like the tables as opposed to the other Star Force map to the right, which is like the Cosmetic Fellas, because these are very big mobs, and Cleave will just tear through them and hit the platform below you. There are some platforms that just it doesn't hit in the map to the right, if I can showcase that really quick. So on this map, can't hit those ones underneath me. On this platform, I can hit the ones underneath me. So it's just a little annoying annoyance, uh, a little bit of a weird thing. Also on this one, you can't do it. So uh, yeah, I like the dressers a little bit better. Now, honestly, I would stay here until like 170-ish or 175. Um, but you can go with your Hyper Teleport Rock that you got, or at level 160, you can use the Maple Guide as early as 160. You can go to Omega Sector. Uh, why do we want to go to Omega Sector? Because it's very good. Now, you can either use this Corridor 202 map, which is fine. You can stay at that other Star Force map in the Turning Tower, which is fine, until 180. But if you can jump up to this Star Force map over here, H01, even on a low amount of burning, this one's 70%, which is honestly surprising and pretty high. Again, Adele's Cleave is going to hit not just the platform below you, but all three of them. 
and it's a really lazy map, and it's a lot of EXP. The only downside is it requires a bit of preparation, so 140 Star Force is a lot. On my, most of my burning mules I've done, or just regular like mules for Legion that I've done, 140 is just really hard to get to unless you're really putting a lot of extra funding into your character. But if you can do this map, this map is just so, so, so fast. Um, but you can either suffer back at Kerning Tower until 180, or you can come here and try one of these maps until 180. You could stay at this Star Force map if you're, like, pretty comfortable here until 200, honestly. I've done that before myself. If you're killing them at a reasonable speed, it's very, very good EXP. Uh, now, if you do not stay here until 200, we can go to Twilight Perion. If we go over to Temple of Time, get to the future, Twilight Perion is very good as well. Now, a lot of people use Forsaken Excavation Site 2. I also like Forsaken Excavation Site 1, although it is a little bit more moving around that you have to do. Um, but if you can get a Forsaken Excavation Site 2 map, that's just very, very, very good. Looks like no one is on this one for now. And it's mostly because we can hit the bottom and you can just jump up and hit these guys or let your sword summons take care of it. It's really lazy training, but it's also really great EXP. Both of these maps are pretty good, but Fest 2, Forsaken Excavation 2, is uh, it's better. I've done plenty of mules at Excavation Site 1, and it's also quite good. So now you're going to be here until 185 or 200. At 185, you could go to Fox Valley, which is over in Grandis. There is a quest that you'll get for it, which I believe is what envelops Fox Valley, and I really like the Flutter Buzz Top Path map. I remember coming here on my own Adele. It's just a lot of mobs. It's closer to your level... Right? Closer to your level 191, as opposed to... We go back to Gate to the Future, do, 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 do. 195, 194, so you could honestly circumvent a little bit of Forsaken Excavation Site with this and then go back there or just stay here until 200. Those three maps are kind of like your here's how I'll get to 200 maps. Uh, and when you're at level 199 and like 45, 50%, it may be a little bit lower these days. You can do the Haven pre-quest in your light bulb to just finish off level 199 to get to 200 quickly if you're just sick of training at that point. Really, really handy. Uh, and now we're in Arcane River. Good job. Uh, here are your fifth job skills. <laughs> Infinity, I will use when I'm looting. Storm, I will use when I'm looting. Ruin, I'll just kind of use whenever. And Legacy Restoration, you don't really need for training. It's more of a bossing skill. Uh, and your Trinodes are going to be Cleave, Hunting Decree, which is those flying around swords, and Aether Forge, which is one of your class toggles, which just increases its damage by quite a bit. Uh, you can see there that most of these skills increases other skills as well other than just the one that's listed here. So Aether Forge does Noble Summons as well. Hunting Decree does Great Proclamation as well. Uh, and then you'll also want Magic Dispatch, Aether Bloom, and Reign of Destruction. Aether Bloom being that Twirling Sword skill and Reign of Destruction being that orange AoE that you can put down. And everything just increases everything else with Adele. It's crazy. Like this Trinode alone is six skills instead of three. Adele's Trinodes are just really nice. Um, but yeah, those are your uh, perfect trinodes if you are going for trinodes. Otherwise, I w if you're just like, hey, I just want to get this to 250 or whatever, uh, cleave and hunting decree, and probably Aether Forge and Reign of Destruction. I would say Magic Dispatch you can leave out if you really wanted to. Aether Bloom you can probably leave out if you really wanted to. But they're all really good skills, especially if you're turning it into a bossing mule. Uh, just to showcase these skills, so in order to use Storm, you have to have some amount of swords out. It gets stronger the more swords you have out, and then you can push Storm, and it is this big-ass AoE skill. 
It, you don't even have to attack, it just attacks automatically. It does more damage than the lines provided here if you have more swords out. And it's a 90 second cooldown, I'll use it when I'm jumping around the map and looting. Like before I got a back pet, that's how I would loot, as I would turn that skill on and let my pets run over stuff. Ruin is a skill you want to use at the very bottom of a map. It has more vertical damage than it has horizontal damage, but it's still quite nice uh, AoE to get out there. Oh, Hyper Skills, by the way. Um, Shardbreaker is also really good. It's like Ruin, but hits like the whole map. And has a 60 second cooldown, really nice. Blade Torrent is your bind. I usually just bind uh, an Elite whenever it spawns. Divine Wrath is just your class 10% damage skill. Uh, my bossing setup might be good for training. Uh, let's see here. Trigger Reinforce. A trigger skill cleave. This big sword is a trigger skill. So damage 20% for that. Boss 20% for that. You don't need the extra resource from using Resonance Rush. You don't need the extra ignore defense from Guard Break here. Reign of Destruction lasting 4 additional seconds is awesome. I would honestly get that first if you can. Uh, Aether Bloom cooldown minus 25% helps it line up with Noble Summons more in a bossing scenario, and it's also just good AoE further on to have it on a lower cooldown. You might choose Will to Live instead of True Nobility. Will to Live will let you recover more HP and MP versus true nobility which is more like you have sh you have shield hp here this yellow hp at the bottom it gives you a damage boost for 15 seconds or 20 seconds however long it lasts 20 seconds uh will to live might just be better for training more consistent for just like hey i just want to turn my brain off and not have to push a potion if your arcane force is not high enough to just take one damage in the arcane river uh could also be helpful in Odium and stuff. I, I might honestly have a training setup one of these days where I try that out. Uh, that's Hyper Skills. That's fifth job skills. Oh yeah, Infinity is your background changing and music changing skill. You can also loot during this. Uh, you could turn Storm on with this. They would line up 180 seconds and 90 seconds. You can use Storm twice for every Infinity here. And it, it's like your regular Noble Summons, you kind of have to be attacking for the swords to attack. They won't just have a mind of their own. Uh, but most of the time you'll just be using Cleave, your Ruin, your Shard Breaker, Hyper Skill, and you'll have your swords out that you'll just have flying around with a mind of their own doing stuff. So let's get into those maps. We've talked about these skills. This is kind of just a crash course on, on Adele's skills. This is not meant to be a in-depth kind of a guide here, but hopefully that helps a little bit to get a feel for what's going on here. Uh, Urda Shower, also very good if you have the slot for Urda Shower, I would get that early. I would also craft Holy Symbol early. Holy Symbol, Urda Shower, very good for mobbing on maps and getting additional EXP here. So, level 200, where do we go? We're gonna go to Below the Cave for five levels. It's just really nice. You can just flash jump left and right. Now the Meso on this map is not quite good because the Lanterns themselves do not have any drops that they give you, just the big guys do. But the EXP will be good enough that you'll be out of here before long. Just jumping left and right. And you can up jump and just start booting like uh, letting your pets roll across the top platforms if you're on a loot cycle with your storm active. Uh, and I recently learned how overpowered uh, this map is in Reverse City once you're at 205. Which you'd think I would have known about this sooner, but Hidden Research Train is fucking nuts. It's so much EXP. Like, holy shit, this map is broken. Like, you'll want to be here until 215. You can put your uh, your dude over there on the right, or even over here on the left on one of these middle platforms. And uh, yeah, your Urda Shower, and just go nuts. If you attack at the peak of your jump, you can even hit this platform here with your cleave. If you're not just hitting that with uh, the swords that are flying around or whatever else. This map is so good. 
Uh, there's maps in Choo Choo that you could circumvent to if you get sick of this, but this map is honestly so good, I don't think you'll get sick of it. Uh, you could theoretically do Bitty Bobble Forest, which is a fan favorite. Or you could, I, I liked the the boss right turtle maps. And again, this map is just good because Cleave, if you're attacking at the peak of your jump, at least on the middle platform, you can hit that platform above you there. And these right turtle maps, they require a little bit more arcane force, but it's just fun. You just go fast in the water and it's just fun. And it's not the best map in the world, but it works out well enough. Now, uh, once you hit 215, another really, really, really good map. Hidden Illiard Field. If you're able to kill this map in a reasonable amount of swings, it's so good for Adele. You can just attack left, attack right, it hits all three platforms, including the floor here. You can put your, uh, your dude over there on the right or the left to give you a little bit more extra damage. You can have your swords out here to help you hit stuff, but this map is also very good like the Hidden Research Train because these are like the quote-unquote big mobs of the area. They're the potent version as opposed to just the, the regular version. Uh, now, if you are having trouble on this map where I trained, which is still pretty good, is just regular cum fighters, which is like the best enemy name in this game. Like, why did they do this? Um, but yeah, you can put your dude down in one of the corners, or you can just flash jump over one direction, flash jump over back the other direction, flash jump up to get back up to that platform there. Uh, but this is also where I had trained before, but Hidden Illiard Field is going to be king. Uh, and once you hit 220, we are going to another busted map that they've recently changed. We're going to Latch Lines, Outlaw Street 1 specifically for Adele. Two is a little bit harder despite having more mobs, but the reason for one, hit all three platforms there, hit two platforms there, can jump over to hit the other platforms, hit two platforms, hit two platforms, and you can kind of just live in the middle of this zone here, and there's so many mobs on this map, it's actually insane. And you can plop your dude down either here on the left, or over here on the right works all as well. But you'll probably just be flash jumping left and right. I used to be a firm believer of if I have to move when I'm training, I don't like the map, but this map is honestly very good. I, if I could go back to level 220, I, I would do this map. Uh, Outlaw 2 is okay, but you don't get the uh, ability to attack the bottom the floor there. Do it on this platform, you know, on that platform. Well, I'm full of shit. I guess the leftmost platform is the only one that you can't do it on. And I guess you could just put your uh, your uh, shower over there. So yeah, I mean, maybe try Outlaw Street 2. This map is also fucking crazy. You can't just live in the middle of the map like the other map there to the right, but it's still really, really good. I was doing my Night Lord here, and it was just insane. And Adele's mobbing is also just really, really good, so give this a shot, too. Uh, and then once we're 225, we are in Arcana, which is just so good these days. Now, there's the fan favorite CLP map, which you can just hit the bottom platform again as an Adele here with Cleave. Put your little shower in the middle here to help with the top that your swords will also be helping you with. But honestly, CLP, I'm gonna say it, overrated. Here's why. Uh, it's really good for a lazy trading map, but let me introduce you to Lower Path 1, where you can hit all of these mobs at the peak of your flash jump. It's a little bit challenging to do it, a little bit harder to do it, but hear me out, the EXP and the Meso are just really good. Well, the Meso at CLP is also really good, but honestly, I really like this map. I've been enjoying it a lot on my Night Lord. I've been training here until 240. 
That's insane. We got here at 225 and I trained here until 240 on my Night Lord. I might train here until 245 or 250. The other really broken map. Labyrinthine Cavern. Now, this unfortunately in Barra has been taken over a little bit by the Meso Mafia. So I wonder if I can even find a map to show like what you do. Oh, lucky. Uh, so if you can find a map here, this used to be my favorite map, but then Meso Mafia took over. It's just another one of the like lower path one maps. You just flash jump left and right, and the EXP here is insane. Like I trained my jet here, I trained my Ilium here, and they they are just this map is just so good in addition to lower path one. If you don't want to deal with CLP, sometimes CLP just is crazy. There's a lot of weirdos that go there. Um, But yeah, uh, Arcana until 2.40? Did someone say Arcana until 2.40? I was getting 50% an hour just using a regular 2x usable like Legion coupon and an MVP buff in Lower Path 1 at level 235 on my Night Lord. So 50% an hour is still pretty darn good, I think. You can, tr you can stay in Arcana for quite a while. Uh, Moras is too sweaty. I would not recommend you train at Moras. Esfera, you could try Mirror Touched C2 for like a lazy option because you can stand in the middle here and kind of attack stuff. You could put your shower on either the, the right or the left here to help with those platforms up there. Uh, so this could be okay. And then you could also try Mirror Touch C7 or 6. These are very sweaty maps, though. Mirror Touch C7 and 6. They have a ton of mobs on them, though. Like, they have a ton of mobs on them. I have not personally tried 6. I tried to do 7 on my jet, and I just it just was not working out on my jet. Uh, I don't know if it's gonna work out on Adele. I'm gonna be honest, I don't know if it's gonna work out on Adele, but this map I know is pretty nuts for certain classes. It, I'm just like iffy if Adele is one of them, which is why I'm saying like maybe stay in Arcana until 240 so you can go to Celis. And now Celis is very good. Let me introduce you to the Hyper Rock freaking out because reset just hit. Hello, reset lag. Uh, Celis, Plunging Depths 4, pretty good map. I, I, I'm a fan of Plunging Depths 4. Adele's sword swing hits the bottom platform right there. You can up jump real easily to hit those ones. You can plop your, your summon up here as well. You can have your sword summons out helping you clear stuff as well. Uh, this map is just really nice. It's really lazy. You don't have to move too much. And looting it isn't too, too challenging, so the Meso is pretty good. Uh, I would also consider SSS1. SSS1 is ultimate lazy plus Meso. You just stand in the middle here. Uh, there's this gap here. You want to stand like right next to that gap. And you jump to the left, swing. Swing when you land, swing to the right, and you kill pretty much the whole map in three swings, which is about the frenzy respawn timer. Uh, maybe you have an extra swing if you're using speed infusion in a green pot from Monster Park. Um, but sometimes you just pop your rain of destruction over there to help deal with that platform over there that you can't necessarily hit. You can also pop your dude down there, your shower. And then the looting cycle is very simple. You just kind of go in a big old circle. And you accidentally up jump and hit that portal. Um, but yeah, I like SSS1. It's kind of turned into a Meso Mafia map in Barra. So just keep that in mind. This map might be very, very busy. Uh, SSS4, if you have to go to SSS4, is also a little bit of a Meso Mafia map as well, but it, it works pretty decently. It's kind of like SSS1, but a little bit bigger, so you have to work a little bit more. Uh, honestly, I would just do Plunging Depths 4. Plunging Depths 4, you'll probably pretty much always find a map. And I honestly stayed until would stay in Celis until 250, 
You could try some Moonbridge maps, but these are not approved by uh, me trying them out on a new Adele character to see what the rates would be. But Last Horizon 2 is alright, because again, it's one of those maps where Adele's cleave can just hit the bottom platform and you can just kind of live in the middle platform there. Put your Urda Shower down somewhere on the left or the right to help out, because it will hit the bottom. Uh, so this is a map I would love to try out one day if I ever made a second Intel, which I probably won't. Or, I mean, some people like Void Current 3, but I really hate looting on this map. Uh, the EXP is quite good. I have trained here before on my Arc and my Ilium. The EXP is pretty comparable to uh, Plunging Depths 4, but Plunging Depths 4 I think is just the easier map to train on, or SSS 1 if you can get to it. Uh, now that you're 250, you either stay in Celis and Moonbridge, or you can go to Labyrinth of Suffering, and you can try out Interior 1, which I came here and was like, huh, this map's really nice now. There's a ton of mobs. It's small enough that you can just have your swords flying around and you can just cleave all the time. You can probably plop your dude over there or even up here to triple platform. I don't know why I keep calling that the dude, but that's just the dude now. So it's a little bit more of an active training map, but honestly, give it a try if your rates in Celis and Moonbridge are uh, not satisfying you. Also a map that's kind of like maybe come here if you can find one. This is also kind of taken over by the Meso Mafia and Vera. Uh, Deep Core 1 is like busted at the moment, as is... Uh, Deep Core 4, which is currently being Ma Meso Mafia'd. Uh, but those t this map you'll probably never find an empty one of. You might be lucky though. Uh, Deep Core 1, you might be a little bit more lucky, so just a couple Labyrinth maps if you want to try something out. Uh, and once you're 255, let me tell you about Midpoint 4. Now, Midpoint 4 is pretty insane. It's got the, uh, fuck you, I'm gonna kill you. Uh, I'll kill them later, but, uh, so you can just put your, uh, your summon fellow here. They're the big mobs, they're the potent big mobs that give you more EXP. This map goes all the way down here. The last platform the mobs spawn on is down here, but Adele's Cleave, plus the tall hitbox of these mobs, you don't even have to go down there. You can just up jump, and you can just do whatever you want in this map. This map is so good. A lot of my guildies have used it, they love it. Uh, I can see why. I never got to use it, but these mobs give you base more EXP than a regular mob. There's a ton of mobs even without Frenzy. You're just getting a Sendy on familiar cards. It's just so good. It's really good. It's maybe a little bit of a pain in the ass to loot, but the EXP will be so good. Uh, I trained at Sorrow Depths 1 for a little bit when I hit the 2, was that when I was in the 255 range? because all of these maps, like, good fucking luck finding one, except for maybe the powerful Embryon map 2-6, or the powerful uh, Forbarion map 1-7 here. Yeah, okay, this might be Meso Mafia'd up. Um, check this map as well, just to see. Gotta give accurate info. Oh, this map kind of blows. <laughs> Never mind, <laughs> don't come here. Uh, not for Adele's. This might be good for another class. Like, I know a Beast Tamer that used to train here. Uh, I would just stick with Midpoint 4. Nine times out of ten, you'll probably find a map. Uh, Midpoint 3, 2, and 1 are also good, but in Barra they are just fucked with people farming mesos. So, uh, good luck if you get one of those. I would just stick to the powerful map if you want EXP. Uh, and congratulations, now you're level 260, and you can go to Cernium <laughs> and have fun with the time gate of Sacred Symbols. Hopefully there's an event going with Sacred Symbol Selectors. Uh, if I could retrain in Cernium, I would try Library Section 4. They redid some of these maps, and Section 4 just seems quite good. Uh, it's again a map where you can hit the bottom platform with your cleave. Very, very nice. 
Uh, you could also go one map over here to library section one. It's a very similar map. There's somebody here. Probably doing dailies, honestly. Uh, very similar, but just a little bit uh, more contested, I would think, because a lot of people do these, or at least used to do this map for dailies. I think people have shifted towards fire spirits more, but um, yeah, I really like the uh, idea of section 4 now, because all the platforms are flat, except this one on the right. And you can place your dude on the right or the left, and it will help you with those platforms. I believe it triple plats. I believe it hits the floor, right? Yeah, it hits the floor as well, so it can take care of a side for you. If you just want to be on the side doing kind of what you did in Celis, or like an alternate version of what you did in Celis, that's what I would do. Overwhelming. Please go. Uh, so... I would honestly train in Cernium until 270. The EXP at 265 does not double like it does for all the other levels. Every 5 increment usually it doubles, 260 to 270, they were nice. All of the mobs in Burning Cernium are just small, so Adele's Cleave can't really hit platforms underneath you, so I think staying in Cernium until you're 270 is honestly better. Uh, I knew someone who trained at Western Ramparts in Battle 1. Uh, I know some people who really like the Burning Library maps, but honestly, this for just how Adele's Cleave is and how the swords fly around, I, I would stay in Section 4 or Section 1 of just regular ass Cernium. Uh, and congratulations, you're level 270. Welcome to your favorite map forever. God, I love this map. Someone was here, there's loot. Um, I just kind of go in a circle on Outlaw Infested Wastes 1, and I was getting quite a lot of EXP. Uh, this is one of the maps that they did recently change a few months ago. Uh, I would put my Reign of Destruction over there on the left, I would put my, my dude over here on the right, to help with that bottom right spawn. Someone is here. And yeah, I just went in a circle. Just a big old clockwise circle. Just going from the second platform to the left, and the third platform to the right. And obviously, honestly, use your skills whenever you've got them. Ether Bloom Noble Summons are actually pretty good AoE. And uh, looting, not too bad on this map. You can again just use your storm. Or you can use your infinity as well. And it helps a lot, not just with mobbing, but with looting. If you are still unable to obtain a back pet, which back pets, especially off event, are way too expensive. I would never recommend buying one. Uh, but this map's really good. It's also the lowest sacred power map in Arcus, which helps a lot. Um, because sacred force is just such a time game. Uh, and now that you are 275 like me, I have no idea where to train an Odium, to be honest with you. I was thinking of trying either. Uh, Castlegate 1, which has the diamond dogs in it, because I can one-shot them most of the time, probably with guild skills, and my uh, hyper stat changed around to normal monster damage, and my legion changed to normal monster damage. This map might be good. Uh, I was also thinking of trying out either Captured Alley 1 or 2. I think I had a preference for 1. It's just another one of those maps like the Royal Library, Section 4 and Section 1. You can set your dude over here on the right to take care of that. Just take care of the left side of the map until you need to resummon it. But I do not have enough Sacred Power for this map yet. Uh, and Section... Map number 2, Captured Alley 2 here, I also think might be good, just because it's again one of those maps that you can hit the bottom platform with a regular attack. A lot of the maps in Odium just seem really, really good. Like, so many of the maps in Odium have a ton of mobs on them, so honestly, if you find a map that you just like, you probably can't go wrong in Odium. 
And until new maps come out, that's kind of what it amounts to here. So uh, hopefully that's helpful uh, if you're burning an Adele to either 200 or 250, or if you want to start maining an Adele and you want to know where to train in June of 2023, which is when this video was created, June 13th, 2023. Uh, I'm sure they will be changing maps in the future. They're continually reducing the EXP required to level up, which is awesome. Um, they're doing fucking 6th job, how nuts is that? So 6th job might start helping you at Cernium if you're waiting to do a new character to 260 until then. Um, and yeah, uh, that was an adult where to train from level 1 to 275 plus guide, and now I need to go do my dailies before the server check tonight. So I'll see you later. Hopefully this helped. Again, long goodbyes and such, but uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Hope you guys have a good day.